Welcome to the ITIL4 IT Asset Management Practice Sample Paper 1 Recording from One World Training. We would like to acknowledge Axelos and PeopleCert as we have used their official papers and information in this recording. About One World Training. We are a global training, business simulation, and training company having offices in the USA, UK, the Netherlands, India, Malaysia, UAE, South Africa, and many other countries globally. We provide training in IT, business management, project management, ISO standards, GDPR, and many other topics for individuals and organizations. One World Training delivers courses in five different ways. One, public classroom. Two, online, which is virtual. 3. E-learning, 4. A mix of e-learning with support when you need it, and 5. On-site for private and government organizations. We are authorized and endorsed by leading global professional bodies. And you can see logos of some of those bodies and some of the courses that we offer on this slide. We have two sample papers from PeopleCert, both of them have been recorded. This is the recording for the first paper. The sample papers are in line with the actual exam style. However, the actual exam or the real exam would have other questions, not these exactly. It's a 30 minute exam, or in this case, a sample exam. There will be 20 questions. Each question is worth one mark. These are all multiple choice. There is no negative marking, and there is only one correct answer per question. You need to answer 13 of the 20 at least correctly to pass the exam and to get certified in the real exam. I will take you through these 20 questions. I will also be pausing for a few moments for you to think about the answer for each question before I reveal and explain the answer. I will also take you for some of the questions into the practice guide and show you evidence of the answer. We begin with question number one. Some components should not be managed because the cost of managing their life cycle is too high for the benefit that would be received. How should an IT asset manager achieve this? A, define the scope of IT asset management to exclude these components. B, define an IT asset type for these components so that has no life cycle stages. C, exclude these assets from IT management verification and audits. D excludes these assets from the IT asset register. So there are some IT components whose cost of managing their life cycle is too high as compared to the benefits. And therefore, they should not be managed. And how should the IT asset manager achieve this? So it is important that the financial value or the benefit uh, is at achieved rather than just bringing an asset into the asset management practice. Therefore, option A looks good. Define the scope of IT asset management to exclude these components because the purpose of the IT asset management practice is to plan and manage the full life cycle of all assets. And we need to adopt and adapt. Um, this practice within the organization's context and the financial value they could equate to the IT assets purchase or replacement cost, how it correctly, uh, directly or indirectly contributes to value co-creation or the mission criticality of the service that it underpins. Because that is what the practice really achieves, the value from the assets. Could it be financial value or some other value? And if that is not possible, then those need to be excluded. Therefore, A would be the best one. Now, option B is about defining an IT asset type that has no life cycle stages. That's not possible. All IT asset types will have life cycle stages. And uh, option C, excluding these assets from the IT asset management verification and audits. This is also incorrect because there would be some effort to manage these IT assets. And without verification and audit, it's possible that there would be inaccurate data for these assets. Therefore, verification and auditing is necessary and it should become an integral part of the ITAM practice so that the data is valid and available for the stakeholders. 
Option D, exclude these IT assets from the IT asset register. This is also incorrect because uh, if those components are need to be treated as IT assets, then their full life cycle should be managed, which includes storing information about them in the IT asset register. Therefore, the answer would be A. For the exam, do refer to the full description of the purpose of the practice of the IT asset management and also the definition of the IT asset. You need to understand those clearly so that, and this is explained in our other recording in the main courseware, so that you can answer different types of questions from the same concept. Question number two. An IT asset manager has identified what data should be created or updated for each IT asset and when this should be done. Where should these requirements be documented? A, in an exception report, B, in an IT asset register, C, in an IT asset lifecycle model, or B, D, in the IT asset audit report. So here, let's uh, look at the question quickly. It's about um, what data to be created or updated for each IT asset and when that should occur. So is it A, exception report? No, because exception report occurs when there is an issue managing the life cycle of an IT asset. Option B, IT asset register, that is also incorrect because that mainly stores the information about the IT assets. It does not define the IT asset life cycle models. Option C is the answer in an IT asset lifecycle model because such models define what information should be captured, recorded and reported to the stakeholders at each stage of the IT asset lifecycle, meaning when they should be reported and recorded as well. So C would be correct. Option D is also incorrect in an IT asset audit report because that's an output of the process of verifying, auditing and analyzing IT assets. And that would be incorrect. So C would be the correct answer. Question number three, what are the two aspects of IT asset management that should be measured and optimized to ensure that the practice achieves its purpose? One, efficiency and effectiveness of the IT asset management processes. Two, completeness and accuracy of the IT asset register. Three, support provided to value streams by IT asset management. Or four, achievement of IT asset management practice success factors. Now, this is a list type of question wherein you have the four answer options, A, B, C, and D. You still have to pick up just one of those four. However, each option, there is a combination of two of the four items listed in the question. For example, option A answer is a combination of one and two, and similarly the others. So you need to pick up two of the numbers, one, two, three, and four, and then decide on which of those two are the correct options. Let us look at the question carefully. There is a phrase here, ensure that the practice achieves its purpose. And that is a big hint there for us because it is a practice success factors or the PSFs which help to ensure that the practice achieves its purpose. So let's see which of these two here are practice success factors. Now, when I look at them, Uh, number three, the support provided to value streams by IT asset management. And uh, four, achievement of IC, IT asset management practice success factors. So four would be definitely correct because the once the PSFs are achieved, it means the practice will achieve its purpose. So four is definitely good. But we also have number one and two, which also look good, efficiency and effectiveness of the IT asset management processes. Number two, completeness and accuracy of the IT asset register. So we need to be probably careful between one, two, and three to pick one of them. So let's, uh, uh, the first one, the efficiency and effectiveness uh, would be incorrect um, because measuring them and optimizing them uh, may not ensure that the practice achieves its purpose because uh, 
the metrics need to be based on the overall service strategy and priorities of the organization and also the goals of the value stream to which the practice contributes. Therefore, not just effectiveness and efficiency of the processes only. Therefore, one is not a strong point. Number two, completeness and accuracy of uh, the ITSL register. It is also a metric which does help to measure one of the practice success factors, uh, but it doesn't cover all the practice success factors. So let's see if three is any useful support provided to value streams by IT asset management. And um, yes, uh, this is a key point because the effectiveness and performance of the ITIL practices should be assessed within the context of the value stream to which each practice contributes. And metrics will be based on the overall service strategy and priorities of the organization, as well as the goals of the value stream to which the practice contrib contribute. Therefore, the value stream is a key phrase in uh, option three there, as compared to option two, which seems to be very close. And uh, option four is a good one because uh, PSF or a practice success factor is a complex functional component of a practice that is required for the practice to fulfill its purpose. And uh, the key metrics of the ITAM practice are mapped to its PSFs. So number four is a good one. Therefore, we can say three and four are the best options here. So this is a slightly challenging or tricky question where we need to be careful between uh, the options one, two, three, and four. Question four. An organization is undertaking a planned exercise to identify discrepancies between IT assets and the IT asset register and to rectify any issues that are found. What is this exercise called? A, an IT asset audit. B, IT asset discovery. C, IT asset verification. Or D, IT asset inventory. This should be a easier question. Yes, indeed. Uh, the first one looks good, IT asset audit, because uh, there is a planned, structured, and documented inspection of an organization's IT assets, including data collection, examination, verification, and correction activities. Let's take a look at the others in any case. Option B, IT asset discovery. Uh, discovery is data collection and cleanup achieved through automation technology and tools to build or verify the contents of the IT asset register. So that would be not correct. Option C, IT asset verification. Uh, it is a continuous background activity, but compare that with the option A, audit, which is a planned verification exercise. And if you notice carefully in the question, it specifies the organization is undertaking a planned exercise. So C would be incorrect. Option D, inventory. An inventory is again, data collection and cleanup uh, performed as manual tasks to build or verify contents of the IT asset register. An inventory uh, can be, and also discovery as well, uh, usually are required to support the audit. Uh, so anyway, the correct answer would be the first one, IT asset audit. Question number five, an organization has defined an IT asset lifecycle model that includes planning and budgeting, acquisition, assignment, Utilization, optimization, and reporting, decommission, and disposal. Why do some IT assets go from decommission to assignment rather than following the normal sequence? A, because the assets have been sold to third parties. B, because they are valuable assets that can be reused. C, because the assets need to be stored for security purposes. Or D, because the lifecycle model does not specify a sequence for the activities. So think about this carefully again. Usually we may have to rule out between two possible answers. So question is uh, about why some assets could go from decommissioning to assignment rather than following the cycle um, in linear sequence. That is plan, budget, acquire, assign, utilize, optimize, report, decommission, disposal. By the way, utilization, optimization, and reporting forms one stage of this cycle. Uh, 
So option A, assets sold to third parties, that would be incorrect because that would not be reassigned. It would go through uh, the normal life cycle to disposal. Uh, option B, there are valuable assets that can be reused. This seems to be a good one because a valuable asset may be reused many times. So it will be decommissioned after use uh, in one case and then assigned for a different use soon after or afterwards. So these are uh, these go through the life cycle stages in a non-linear way. So IT assets being reassigned multiple times throughout their useful life. So it may not go to disposal after the decommissioning. Therefore, B seems to be a good one. Now option C, because the assets need to be stored for security purposes, uh, that will need not be reassigned. It can be decommissioned and stored. Uh, so uh, yes, so just similar to option B there, I mentioned uh, uh, some assets can be reassigned multiple times throughout their useful life. But in the case of C here, uh, if they are being stored for security purposes, they will uh, need not be reassigned. They're just decommissioned and kept safely. Then uh, option D, because the life cycle model does not specify a sequence for the activities, uh, this is also incorrect because the life cycle is actually a set of stages. Uh, each stage represents a certain status and the status transitions that are permitted are represented by the life cycle. So it's very close between um, option B, the second one and the last one D, and the correct one would be B. Even though the life cycle model, uh, uh, we should not think that the life cycle model does not specify a sequence. It does have a sequence, but uh, the sequence may not always be linear. And the life cycle is actually a set of stages with a specific status in each stage. Uh, 